In this video, we're going to look at a result um, that has to do with the index modulo n with respect to some primitive root, and it actually involves something that looks a lot like logarithm rules. And so uh, let's look at what it is. So let r be a primitive root mod n, and then we have two numbers that are relatively prime to n, a and b, and we have these first two which are fairly trivial and I'll just talk through and I won't write down, and that is the index um, of 1 with respect to r is 0 mod phi to the n, and let's recall that the index is the smallest positive number such that r to that positive number is congruent to 1 mod n, but the smallest such positive number will be phi of n given the definition of the primitive root, but that makes this thing congruent to zero mod phi of n. And then number two, um, the index of r with respect to r is one mod phi to the n. So again, that's like uh, pretty obvious just by the definition. You can write r as r to the one, and one is obviously the smallest positive integer. So now we'll focus on these two. So if you have a product inside an index, that turns into a sum outside of the index. So that should look like a logarithm rule. And then if you have an exponent inside the index, that turns into a product outside the index. So again, and that should look like a logarithm rule. Okay, good. So uh, let's get on with the proof. So we'll start with number three because we just talked through uh, number one and two. And so let's notice the following. Let's notice that r to the index uh, sub r of a is congruent to a modulo n. Okay, so, you know, that's the definition of the index. So we've got this, like, exponentiation logarithm uh, inverse relationship. Um, but in this case, we're calling the logarithm uh, an index. And then we also have r to the power i r b is congruent to b mod n. And now using the arithmetic modulo n, we can multiply both sides of these congruences and get uh, another congruence. So we multiply the left-hand sides and then you use some exponent rules. That gives us r to the i r b plus i r a, good, is congruent to a b mod n. And now we're going to use the same trick that we used above to rewrite a, b. So notice that is the same thing as um, r to the i, r, a, b, mod n. Okay, so we've got r to some power equals r to some other power. And now by a previous result, that tells us the following. So that tells us that i, r, a plus i r b is congruent to i r a b modulo the order um, mod n of r. Good. So that's exactly uh, how that result reads. Um, but notice that the order modulo n of r is exactly phi of n, which uh, finishes the proof of part three. Good. And so now uh, let's look at part four. So we're going to do a pretty similar thing. So notice this looks like the proof of uh, the logarithm rule for real numbers, except at the very end we apply this uh, previous result. And this one for part four is going to look similar. And so uh, what we'll do is the following. We'll say r to the power of the index of r of a to the m is congruent to a to the m mod n. So that's maybe uh, fact number one. And then fact number two is the following. Um, r to the m i r a. So now using exponent rules, that's the same thing as r to the power i r a all to the power of m. Good, but now we know that this part in the interior is just a, so that tells that this is congruent to a to the m mod n. 
So again, we have those two orange underlined terms are congruent modulo n, which tells you that their exponents are congruent modulo the order of r. In other words, we have i r a to the m is congruent to m i r a, and now we're working mod phi to the phi of n. And so the takeaway here is that if you're working inside exponents, you don't work modulo n, but you work modulo phi of n. Um, but other than that, a lot of the same rules for um, arithmetic work in this setting. Okay, that's the end of this proof.